Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the four main pillars of learning. They are very important for learning medicine, but more importantly, they are important for learning any new information. If you are able to master these techniques, we promise you that you will do well in any field of studies, no matter what you take up in future. It's especially useful for medicine. So, which are these four pillars? So, the four pillars we are going to talk about are first is atomic studying, second is Pomodoro technique, third is active learning, and the fourth, what is known as clinical correlation or stories based learning or anecdotal learning. So, these are the four pillars of learning effectively. Let's first start about atomic learning. Now, the word atomic learning actually comes from atomic studying, comes from the word atomic habits. And this is based on a book by a guy called James Clear. Now, if you've not read this book, I'd suggest that this is a great book to learn, a great book to read, because this tells you about making and forming new habits. And this is a very nice book, and I think it has changed my life. So the term atomic studying actually is not written in any, any you would not find this word on the internet. The reason is that this word is coined by us. And this is based on, like I said, the book called Atomic Habits. Now, let us let me begin to, to, to make you understand about atomic studying uh, based on a story. Now, when we were in school, uh, we had a headmaster who was a brilliant guy. I think he had a brilliant, uh, uh, you know, uh, thing and we learned a lot from him. So, this person was very fond of movies and he used to, you know, watch every movie. Now, he was headmaster for school. But he used to watch every single movie that got released. And back in the day, we did not have Netflix and all that. So he used to, uh, you know, uh, go to the theaters and watch the movie. But he had a habit which was which, which he kept for all his life. And that was he would study two hours every day. It did not matter what he studied, you know. Initially, of course, he would have to study for his degrees and so on and so forth. School degrees and so on. But even after he became the headmaster, he continued to study two hours every day. He had this habit and it did not matter what day it was. It could be a Sunday, it could be his birthday, uh, it could be a day where, where, you know, it could be a Diwali. But no matter what happened, he would study two hours every single day. And sometimes, you know, he would, he would come back from a movie late and then he would take a bath and then sit and study for two hours. So, what he essentially did was that he, instead of studying for eight hours, 10 hours on a single day preparing for an exam, he would spend two hours every single day. You know, what I've learned uh, and, in, in medical school is that there are a lot of people who spend the entire year, you know, not studying and then they sit up over the night, uh, over the you know last day and sit up all night and study. Now, this may work, but this is a very destructive technique. Remember, when you're studying medicine, you're not just studying for now, you're studying for the future. And you are able to retain information better if you space your learning, if you if you learn at regular intervals every single day. So let's say you're preparing for an exam, which is three months away, maybe six months away. Make up a plan, make up a calendar of studying whatever amounts every day. It could be two hours every day. It could be four hours every day. It could be six hours every day, depending on how far your exam is and how much time you need to spend studying. But make sure you do it every single day. If you do it every single day, it becomes a habit. And this habit will stay for the rest of your life and you will become a better doctor or whatever other field that you're taking up. You will do it better if you study every day. Also, there's a technique called space repetition, right? So let's say on a Monday, you studied a particular topic. You made your notes, you made your flashcards and whatever technique that you've done. Next Monday, repeat what you learned the last week. Study, you know, uh, repeat the points which you learned. Revise what you learn. This is known as space repetition. And if you, you know, space out your learning uh, regularly, it becomes a better, better technique. So this is what is known as atomic study. Now, the other technique I would like to, uh, you know, discuss with you is what is known as a Pomodoro technique. Now, the term Pomodoro technique actually comes from Pomodoro. Pomodoro is a type of, you know, and those who are fans of Italian food. It's a type of tomato. Okay. So what is to, uh, Pomodoro technique? Now, actually, why this term comes Pomodoro, we really don't know. Uh, but basically, and this is something I've applied myself in my own studies. 
I done it in the past when I did not even know that such a technique existed, but I continue to do that in a present day. So what Pomodoro technique means is that you don't study for two hours at a stretch, three hours at a stretch. No, you study for 25 minutes every time. And then at the end of 25 minutes, take a five minute break. Now, why 25 minutes? Because our memory and our, our attention span lasts for 25 minutes. And after that, we, you know, we are completely distracted. We may not be able to, you know, uh, retain new information. So the idea is to learn for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break. Then again, learn for 25 minutes and take a five minute break. Now, for me, I had, you know, when, when back in the day, when I was in medical school, I had a, uh, you know, I had an attention span, which was slightly longer than 25 minutes. So I had an attention span of 45 minutes. So what I used to do was I would study for 45 minutes and then take a 15 minute break instead of a five minutes. So it would depend on, on what, how you function, what is your attention span. And also in the Pomodoro technique, they also suggest that, you know, at the end of uh, every uh, four Pomodoros, that is every four sessions, you take a longer break. So 25 minutes, 5 minutes, 25 minutes, 5 minutes, 25 minutes, 5 minutes, do four such sessions. And then end of fourth session, you take a longer break, maybe for an hour, or maybe 30 minutes, right? So this is how you space out your learning. You do a Pomodoro technique. Uh, there are a lot of apps available for this. You know, you can have, uh, you know, uh, apps which are, which are timers. You can use a simple timer on your mobile phone. You know, you can put a 25 minute timer uh, and then a five minute timer and then 25 minute timer. You can do that. It's very simple to do it. Uh, that way you know uh, how to make it more fun so you can make this entire process a little bit more fun also so what i used to do is you know in that 15 minute break so i used to study for 45 minutes and then take a 15 minute break in that 15 minute break i used to wa watch you know uh, all my favorite tv shows you know so i finished so many tv shows uh big bang theory and and friends and seinfeld and parks and recreation all that in that 50 15 minute gap i used to have at the end of my 45 minute study session. So when I would sit for my exams, I study for 45 minutes and take a 15 minute break. You can perhaps, you know, if you have a shorter attention span, study for 25 minutes and take a five minute break. And this is what is known as a Pomodoro technique. Then we'll go to what is known as active learning. Okay. So, you know, we'll, we'll discuss and we we'll discuss this a little bit uh, in another lecture. So what is basically active learning? So when you're learning something, if you're involved in the learning process, you're able to do better. So how can you involve yourself? Instead of just reading the text, uh, you can make notes. You can have a question and answer method, you know, so you can have form questions and try to find the answer in the text. Uh, you can repeat what you learn, right? So I, you know, learn a particular uh, technique, a particular paragraph and then repeat to yourself, right? This is known as Feynman technique. We'll discuss this in more detail. Uh, in, a, in a subsequent lecture. You can study with a friend. You can explore the idea which you learn. So if you learn something, let's say you learned about Pomodoro technique today, you can go to the internet, you can you can uh, look for, you know, sort of YouTube, YouTube videos on Pomodoro technique, you can learn about YouTube videos on, on atomic habits, so on and so forth. So you explore the idea what you learn by researching more. Now, all this is possible if you have enough time. So you're studying at, you know, let's say on the last day of the exam, you'll not be able to do any of this, right? So you spend a few hours every day, You'll be able to do better. What science has shown is that by active learning, uh, if you do something, if you make notes, if you repeat what you're learning, you retain 90% of the information. If you just say and write, you retain 70% of the information. But by passive learning and just reading, 50% uh, of what you see and hear is lost by the end of the day. 30% of what you have read. So if you you know listen to a video, 30% of it you lose out. If you just heard something, maybe maybe. Uh, on, a, on a podcast or, a, or an audio lecture, you lose that. And 10% of only what you read is what you retain, right? So that's the problem. So if you read something, only 10% of that is retained. So that's what is the problem with active versus passive learning. Okay, so let's go ahead. And the last technique what I'd like to discuss with you is what is known as clinical correlation. So, you know, you learn by anecdotes, you learn by, learn by uh, you know, technique. And, you know, when again, when I was doing my endocrinology, I had difficulty in learning about the hypothalamic syndrome. And one day I found a patient who had, uh, you know, uh, craniopharyngeum. I had those classical hypothalamic syndromes. And, you know, his wife told me something very interesting. He said, you know, your, your, uh, my husband, your patient, uh, he's like Kumkan. I said, why is like Kumkan? She says he sleeps all day, 
you know, he, he uh, you know, so he had the involvement of the hypothalamic nucleus, which was involved in the sleep pattern. And and he said he would sleep all day, and he would get up, he would have, he would keep eating, right? He would, have, uh, you know, he would have, an, uh, he would have no satiety at all, and keep eating. And then again, he would go back to sleep. So this is what was, you know, like a kumkarna. So you know, I found this very fascinating, and I I read more about kumkarna, and I correlated with the hypothalamic nuclei. Uh, you know, which were involved, and 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 what I found was that there was an interesting correlation there. I actually wrote a paper on this, uh, published in Indian Journal of Endocrine Research Metabolism, and this actually got you know a lot of lot of uh, you know uh, a lot of traction. Uh, the Times of India actually published this uh, you know as a, as a story. So what I'm trying to tell you is that when you're trying to learn something new, try to correlate with stories, with anecdotes. More importantly. Uh, if you've seen a patient in the ward, you know, go home, or if you have that break in between, you know, study what you learned. Right? Let's say I, I see saw a patient with with uh, hypothyroidism, and you know, I want to know more about it. I want to know what are the clinical features of hypothyroidism in the patient that I saw. A classical patient of mixed mind, you know, I have that patient in front of me. I'd probably take his video, I take his photograph, and you know, in my break, I'd learn about the clinical features of hypothyroidism. Right? Just it takes five minutes. You can open up your up to date, or you can open up your internet, or you can open up your textbook and then learn about it. Right? It just takes five to ten minutes to do that. So every time you see a new patient, you see something new, something interesting, uh, you read about it, uh, uh, you know, right there and then, and that is known as experiential learning. You learn from experience, you learn from that, and remember, when you learn this way, you will never forget. You will never forget. You know. So let's say you go to the ward if you're a medical student and you go to the ward. And you see that you know a patient with with asthma is been given inhaler, uh, is been given a nebulizer, so, and you see the content of the nebulizer. It has let's say asthalen and budecord. So you read about what is asthalen, what is budecord, why is this patient with asthma given this? Uh, so when you learn, when you correlate clinically, you are able to learn much better, and you are able to correlate much better. You are able to understand the techniques in a much better, more much more effective way. Okay. Finally, let's just summarize what we learned today. It's also very important to summarize whenever you learn. So you you know in all our lectures today you will see a lot of summaries. Okay, so why some why you should summarize everything? Because if you summarize everything, you understand, you recall whatever you learn, and and it gives you you know. So whenever I give a lecture, also I always have a take home message. You know, so just four or five slides which tells you four or five key points which you learn. Okay, so first we learned about atomic learning. That is, you learn small bits of information every day instead of sitting just one day before the exam and learning everything. Then, of course, we learned about Pomodoro technique. You know, that is twenty learn at twenty five minutes interval or forty five minutes interval and take five or fifteen minutes break. Then we learned about active learning. That is, whenever you learn, be involved in that process. Make notes, discuss with your friends, research the ideas from the internet, so on and so forth. And finally, we learned about clinical correlation or anecdote or experience based learning. So, if you learn something, you know, try to correlate with what you learned earlier. Uh, try to correlate with the patient that you saw. Or, on the other hand, if you see a patient, read about it, make the notes about it, and then file it in. Right. So, this is known as experience based learning or clinical correlation. So, these are four important pillars of learning medicine. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and we'll see you in the next.